The Cube at OpenStack Summit Atlanta 2014 is brought to you by Brocade. Say goodbye to the status quo and hello to Brocade. And Red Hat. Here are your hosts, John Furrier and Stu Miniman. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are live for day two in Atlanta. We are here at the OpenStack Summit. This is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier with Stu Miniman. Kicking off day two, Stu, we got a big schedule today and more packed guests, a lot of action going on. So uh, uh, what do you expect to hear today, Stu? And then uh, I want to get your opinion on what we heard last night at the events. Yeah, so, so, so John, uh, we had the keynotes this morning. Uh, you had the likes of Solid Fire and Ubuntu, uh, you know, uh, uh, Mark Collier got up and talked about you know where OpenStack has come over the last nine releases and where it needs to go over the next nine releases. So um, you know we, we were poking a little bit at the uh, uh, you know how far we've come and the maturity of the solution. And for for me as an analyst, one of the things I, I look at is you know what are appropriate expectations. Um, you know a, a lot of the players that are, that are involved in this space are startups, and you know you know getting twenty or thirty million dollars worth of revenue is really good for those startups. Um, if if it's the big player, uh, it's, you know who typically won't even consider uh, something as you know somewhat significant unless it's getting over a hundred million dollars, then then we've got a little room uh, before uh, you know OpenStack is going to get there. Uh, but uh, you know you, you asked about last night. I mean, just, so some really good parties. Piston really tore it up. Uh, they had at the Opera House. It was a classy place. The place was jamming. Uh, you know, good, good to see the geeks. Uh, you know, uh, you know, dancing to. What did you hear, Stu? What was the scuttle by? Well, obviously, you know, those parties, people start uh, drinking a few, and then they get uh, loose lips. Yeah. So uh, you know, th th there are deployments of OpenStack. It's not like nobody's doing it. Uh, it's uh, you know, th there are some big service providers uh, that that are uh, you know getting things done. Uh, so, you know, Piston, Swisscom is, uh, you know, well known that that's a good client of theirs. Um, you know, Mirantis has been around for a while, um, and, you know, they have, uh, what I heard is there's, there's one customer of theirs that, you know, definitely makes up, I forget if it's, you know, 10 or 20% of their overall revenue. So, you know, that tells you, in, in the scope of things, you know, where the revenue maturity is, if, if you know, one customer can really just take up such, such a But is there real part. revenues to? I mean, people talking about real, real stuff being shipped and booked. So, John, how would you define real revenue? If you're saying, is anybody making 100 million? No. <laughs> you know, are, are they making you know tens of millions of dollars? Yeah, there's probably a few companies making that. Um, I heard, was talking to one analyst that said that they predicted by 2016 the service provider market uh, will do a billion dollars worth of OpenStack. So, I mean, that's still two years out now, John, and a billion dollars is a lot of money, but when you think about the fact that IBM and HP and everybody else are throwing billions of dollars into this, uh, when will the companies really see their rate of return? So I still think, you know, as we said yesterday, uh, we've got at least another year before the revenue ramp really starts to happen. The other news, Red Hat is announcing their beta availability of Red Hat Enterprise uh, Linux op OpenStack Platform 5. So what's going on now is that, you know, Red Hat is, is making that available now, Stu. So that was news from Red Hat. And again, you know, Red Hat uh, was, was generous enough to step up and sponsor the Cube for OpenStack in this next three days. And so I think it's going extremely well here for uh, Red Hat and certainly a shout out to Brocade as well, uh, sponsoring the Cube. But a lot of news is, is, is happening, but I want to ask you, where's the action in the stack? Is it at the storage? I'm hearing storage, Cinder deals, IBM uh, announced something, you got Solid Fire, um, Pass, obviously, platforms of service is the, is the battleground, as we always say. Where's the action, Stu? Yeah, so, so uh, John, great question. And if you look at who's going to make it easy for the enterprise to consume, it, it, it's great that we've got at this conference those super users, the, the ones that, you know, they know how to code, they know how to, you know, tweak their applications and really get involved and, and, and change the way things are done. The, the problem is, is that most enterprises, John, aren't going to be there. Uh, there was a great quote that said, if, you know, if you're waiting to create, create a bunch of OpenStack ninjas, uh, you know, we're going to be waiting a while for the enterprise to do this. It takes years for, IT to kind of move along and change their career tracks and train people up. Um, that's why SolidFire announced uh, really a, a reference architecture, which is a, a form of converged infrastructure at the show, partnering with the likes of Dell and Red Hat to simplify that stack so that I can, if I can take the infrastructure layer, make it 
easy to consume that, then I can spend my time uh, to automate everything because that, that's what we need to be able to do to, to you know, change so, the IT uh, Tim Crawford, hey Tim, good to see you out there on CrowdChat. Go to crowdchat.net uh, slash OpenStack. Which we're having our group uh, conversation with our new engagement container. Uh, uh, some folks are familiar with you. Want to chime in, we're watching that stream. Stu, he says, aside from the OpenStack ecosystem, what significant announcements and shifts have taken place at the OpenStack Summit? So, um, first of all, I, I don't think there's been a big announcement. What everybody's focused to here on is, you know, this, this started out as a developer show, so we want to make, uh, you know, the, the, the platform more reliable, uh, you know, more, more ready to be consumed. Uh, so, um, you know, it, it's really getting the users involved and getting the operators in, involved um, and, and helping people along that journey to, to you know, transform uh, how they do things. Uh, and, you know, John, it's part of that whole DevOps revolution. So, you know, companies need to get behind Behind that, um, and yeah, we need. We need there's, there hasn't been. There's been a few of the vendors. You know, oh yeah, I've got you know my, my Cinder uh, solution, and um, I, I've got some of the pieces. But it, it's more about you know building that you know full robust solution. And yeah, I mean, Tim, we talked about it yesterday on the wrap up, and I think you know one of the things you, you might have missed that. But what we said was there's no real shot heard around the world at this OpenStack so far. To me, there's a series of momentum type announcements. New customers certainly pissed in with Swisscom, IBM with Cinder, SolidFire here. That a lot, of, a lot of stuff kind of posting up, you know, uh, some announcements. You know, as Dave Vellante would say, you know, the ball move, you know, first and 10, move the chains, you know, yard by yard. It's more of a running game right now. We haven't seen that big passing play, to use the football analogy, Stu. And, and Tim, so the thing is, is that there's no real, you know, shots fired, there's no real action there. But I think the theme that I see is stability. You're seeing people saying, look at this is the real deal. OpenStack is here for the long haul. Everything's out in the open. Certainly, it's a huge vendor fest right now, and so we get a lot of people, you know, blowing in our ear. Hey, you know, we're doing all this great stuff, and you know, I've, I've always said, Stu, we want to talk to customers. So there's some customers out there that are coming forward. You know, Disney was a new one. Wells Fargo last year they had a bunch of other ones. But you know, the, the, what I heard last night, Stu, is people just don't want to come forward. It's too early. Tons of POCs going on, but the foundation is the critical thing for the story here, and that is the foundation of the of the OpenStack foundation is set, it's strong, there's really no cracks in it at this point. I think people are forming, right? You're seeing, you know, the deals happening. So I think you're seeing the posture uh, and, you know, the yeah. partnering. And John, even some of the big vendors, I, I hear they're taking down some deals. The, the, the struggle that they have to deal with is, you know, if you think about the infrastructure guys, the guys that are selling, you know, servers, storage, and, and networking gear, if they put OpenStack in, it is opening the door to make the environment more flexible so that, you know, you know, I hate to say it, but there's less of a lock-in, and so therefore, you know, you know, some big guy selling storage uh, solutions isn't going to bang the drum that said, "Hey, we helped customers move to this new environment." By the way, all my competition, why don't you come in here to try to, you know, displace me uh, when they got the next upgrade? Because, uh, you know, if, if I support OpenStack, and uh, you know, it's going to make it easier for my customers to be able to move, uh, you know, from one piece of infrastructure to another. I think also, the Tim, I would say to Tim and the folks out there is that HP and IBM's presence is significant significant this year. I mean, they've, they've always been involved. We, last year when we were covering it, you know, we talked to SAR, they were here pretty much in a big way. We'll talk to SAR Galai again today, who's the Chief Operating Officer, Senior Vice President of HP Cloud. Um, but bigger presence, bigger commitments, obviously on, the, on their big announcement on Helion, uh, it was just recent, and then obviously Blue Mix with IBM's too. So clearly the big guys are rallying in a big way. It's not just the toe in the water. Uh, again, HP is on the board, so you know, and IBM's heavily involved. So, so that's a big deal in my opinion. Again, this is, this is more of a ground game, a ground swell of, of momentum. It's not really the big wave has crashed to hit the beach yet. So, so I think that's the real story and we're going to keep our eye on it. Again, we want to talk to customers, we're going to talk to the, 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 the film tree guys, Stu, is that, the, is that what they're called? Yeah, uh, di yeah, digital to digital tree. I think who he did he did a funny segment, John. I mean, he yeah. he walked out on stage looking like Zach Galifianakis. They brought the two ferns up there. All they were missing was President Obama, uh, you know, to, to help pitch healthcare. Yeah, and I think that's a great customer testimony. Now, they're not the big company, but they're clearly building on OpenStack, and that's the opportunity from small, medium-sized enterprises to service providers. So, Stu, what else are you expecting to hear from folks today? Um, so, you know, John, it, it, it's more of uh, you know how are we building those swim lanes? You know, where are you know companies going to you know get those early deployments, you know, what, what, what's the benefit to the user, the use cases that, that people can, you know, glom onto, um, and, you know, you know, John, when I, I think back to AWS Summit that we were at last year, uh, I walked into that show and I, 
everybody's talking about the future. It's like, how are we building those new apps? It was, you know, mobile, 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 you know, all the streaming things that were going on. Um, and, you know, there's a great vibe at this show. I mean, I, I love, they've got the big signs of the super users here, you know, the, the geeks are all out in force. Um, but it, it seems very grounded in reality as to, you know, oh, we got to fix Neutron and we got to, you know, do this next patch and, you know, turn the crank on what's going on. Um, I, you know, I, I'd like to hear from some of these people as to, you know, paint that picture as to where we're going. Uh, you know, you're asking every guest as to why this is the most important time. Um, and OpenStack is important, but, you know, th there's some bigger trends that are, seem to be more important to me, uh, you know, I, that, that uh, kind of, you know, overshadow what's yeah, going Eileen on. Yeah, Eileen Evans from HP, and we, Monty, uh, we're on a great segment from HP. Uh, obviously, Monty's on the technical committee and board. Uh, I saw him last night as well, having a good time at the Piston Party, but Eileen basically, I think, called it right. It's really early. I mean, it's still early, early days in, in cloud. I think the real disruption is going to happen. I think this is a multiple decade revolution, Stu. I think that, you know, this is, again, this is just early days, and I think, you know, even IBM said the same thing, that we're going to be kind of joking about it, even Lou Tucker. They all kind of answer the same thing on that one question. The, the consistent theme is, it's super early right now, and, and an industry is being formed. So I think that's the, the real positive thing that I like about this action at OpenStack. It's not the, you know, and there's a lot of vendors kind of like jockeying, but at the end of the day, it's still really early. Yeah, and John, we're, we're, we're going to dig in with the guys that are building the cloud. So companies like DreamHost, uh, you know, HP has their own cloud. Solid Fire, you know, really cut their teeth in the service provider market. So, uh, you know, maybe it's a little early to talk about the enterprises that are going to, you know, put this in because it, it's going to be those bigger cloud deployments if, if they standardize an open stack that are going to help drive this going forward. The question that uh, people were talking about last night is, and this was uh, almost to the point where people wanted to put down some bets, was of all the people that are attending in, in the exhibit, will they be around next year? And that's a good question, Stu. I mean, what do you think about that? Yeah, no, no, John, I mean, ab absolutely. It's hugely disruptive. Uh, you know, if, if you look at, you know, who's on stage and who are the big keynotes, we know that there were, you know, eight, eight, eight or ten companies that wanted those top four slots. So we're going to see, you know, rotating as to who's putting the most money in. Um, it's, it's pretty easy to see that, uh, you know, some of the bigger players that have distributions to it, you know, could be acquired pretty easily, um, you know, or, uh, you know, as some of the bigger players really start to put some focus as revenue grows, you know, how many of them will be able to transition, kind of cross that chasm from the early adopter market? Um, I, yeah, I mean, John, we, we haven't gone through and said, you know, who's really got, uh, you know, their solutions and, you know, who might do an acquisition. Uh, the thing that, we, you know, I, I know you've heard plenty and I, and I have too, there's some of these smaller companies that they might not even want the distribution, but they, they do an acquisition for talent acquisition. Uh, you know, so, so acquiring those people because if you've got you know the, the, those really bright people that are strong in the community, uh, it might be worth you know taking that company out. And I think people are Stu are really nervous. I mean, you know, when you when you see the big companies come in, the proprietary vendors who are now going open, IBM and HP clearly going open source, they get nervous, right? I mean, they get a little bit nervous that you know that the big company's going to come in and do a little land grab, strong arm the community. Um, and, and this has happened in the past, I'm not saying it's going to happen now, but that is what people are afraid of. They're afraid of strings attached to the, to the commitment from the big guys. And that's really the ecosystem thing, but who, you know, will they play nice in the sandbox? We are watching that, so you know, it's just different times, it's all out in the open now, but you know, with social media, we got crowd chat, we got Twitter, I mean, real-time communication, so we see bad behavior, certainly it'll be on Twitter pretty quickly. Uh, and, uh, I think that's the real deal, Stu. I mean, will, can people really identify the bad behavior and eradicate it? I mean, do, what's your take on that? Do you think the community is strong enough to do that? Yeah, so, so John, the, the term I heard over and over at the, the, a, again at the show has been momentum. You know, if, if you just think of this from, you know, how many people are involved, how many companies are putting in effort, um, you know, th there's just strong momentum there. And actually in the keynote this morning, um, I'm, I'm trying to remember, I th think it might have been uh, Collier um, um, it, or, or one of the other people, they said, some people think that we might need kind of that benevolent dictator of the community, but that's not the way that OpenStack works. It's about, uh, you know, the foundation and the community and, you know, just getting everybody involved. So, um, you know, open source is, you know, had plenty of uh, environments that, you know, did need that strong leader. Um, and, you know, maybe OpenStack can, can show a different way, really have the community drive this forward. Uh, it's challenging and hard to do it that way. 
Well, we, you know, we're getting a lot of people want to know what's going to be around for next year. Tim even asked that question. And you know what? Um, we'll make it a, a note for us to we'll walk around tonight. You and I will we'll, we'll start handicapping who's going to be around next year and who's going to make the big moves. I think right now, you know, it's, a, it's about pole position. I don't even think the race has even started. I think, you know, you look at Red Hat, clearly got great pole position with Linux. And I think IBM and HP, their cars are on, right at the top, of the top of the line there. So this is theCUBE. We're going to be breaking it down for day two here live in Atlanta. Stay with us. We'll be right back with our next guest.